And he said, uh, you have heat registers venting into your garage. Your home inspector told you about that, right? Do not use this as a garage. Please do not tell me you're parking a car in here. It, it, it was like a bomb dropped to hear this. We could be looking at making our own home uh, a death trap. Kim and Jason were tired of living in a standard subdivision and looking for that dream home in the right neighborhood. Well, I think they found it. Did the right thing, got a home inspector. He came in and actually gave two thumbs up, but missed just a few things. We love the city. We, we love being downtown, but we knew once we had kids and wanted to raise a family that we wanted to raise our family in an open air, natural environment where they can just open the door and go out and play and have fun and learn about nature and, and all the great things that the city doesn't offer. We just had been playing on the internet, looking at houses that were available, and it popped up and we are like, that looks really neat. And we thought, well, we should take a look. And the second we came and saw it, that was it. The house is 40 years old. Uh, it was a unique build. The previous owners had built it themselves, so we really wanted that home inspection because we knew that there would be some things that were different from your standard subdivision, new home, home inspection. Yeah, we accepted the fact that as an older house, this is where we're going to have to pour our time, our efforts to update things. And, uh, and I like doing a lot of little projects around the place, but we needed to be assured for our kids and our safety that the house was structurally sound and things that normal people don't know about. I was present for the home inspection and then Jay got off of work and he was there for probably about the last half hour of the home inspection but it took about three hours I'd say. He appeared very professional, uh, he was very courteous, he went through a few things, explained a few things, he did find a leak in the furnace and uh, yeah, so we thought everything was going really well. Kim. Mike. Nice, Mike, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. you. Must Such be Jason. Pleasure. Yes, thanks. Pleasure to meet you. Come on in. What a unique house. Thank you. Thank you so much. I like unique. That's what we thought when we saw it, too. OK, well, we have some issues with the house. Tell me about them. One of the things that we noticed on one of our visits was that there was a leak in the house. The first leak that we noticed was up there. So what we did is um, we wanted to get a mold inspection done because with two little ones, we have a one-year-old and a three-year-old, I was really concerned about mold. And that's because of the leak? Because of the leak. Okay. So we had a mold inspector come the first day that we had took possession of the house. So he came in first thing in the morning. Yep. And, and was walking through the house, taking air samples and, and uh, infrared images of the wall. And he went to take a look at the basement. And when he got into the basement, he walked around and he said, uh, you have heat registers venting into your garage. I said, yeah? He said, your home inspector told you about that, right? No. He said, you cannot, promise me you will not park your cars in this garage. This is the most open garage to any house I've ever seen. That person that told you about don't use this garage is absolutely correct because we have nothing but off-gassing from the vehicle coming into your home. Do you use the garage? No. Not at all. It, it was like a bomb dropped to hear this. It just... Not only it, is it the basement pushing. unlivable, but we could be looking at making our own home uh, a death trap. When we first came to see the house, they had like a tractor parked in there and everything insinuating that it is was used as a garage. There's a lot of oil stains all over the place. Like, okay. He was flabbergasted that people could live in a home that was so open, uh, let alone that we could purchase the home and have a home inspection done without it even being brought up. You are not allowed to have an open garage inside your house. As much as I like it, as much as you might like it, you just can't do it. It's because you pull a car in, or a tractor for that matter. A tractor's worse. It's going to have the diesel fumes just ripping through the house. Had we not had the mold inspector in, we wouldn't have known. Like, thank goodness for him, because he is the one who brought that to light and who brought it to our attention. And 
how could you ever forgive yourself had we not known? And had we, you know, the winter had come and we'd been parking in the garage and something had happened to our kids. Oh, one thing we forgot to tell you in the dining room upstairs, when you turn the light on in the basement at night, you can see the light shining up through the dining room floor. Well, it's just, just like, like, don't use this as a garage. Just tells me more that you're just left bleeding everything. And not to mention we have duct work that's heating and we have return air, we have a holy cow and a half. That's a garage door. This is considered a garage. That means anyone, if you sell the house, can park a car in here. That means it's against code. And on top of that, he noticed that our dryer vents into our garage as well. And you can see the lint. Well, that's just foolish. Look dryer. at all the moisture here. Yeah. yeah. The dryer vents right beside where the vents go and bring the air back into the house. Your foundation is cracking there. It cracked right here as it falls down and right there. So this whole area now becomes an issue because if it were to push in this way, what's really holding the wall? Now, I noticed in the, in the report that he did have some foundation cracking, typical words were used. We have an issue on this back corner here. And we have an issue right there. And he missed this. He should not have missed this. This has like been pushed out. You can see it broke in here. It's even pushed out from the ground. We're talking about four inches here, so much that it's grabbing the ledger board that holds the deck. Problem is, is that their header plate really ties in right here, and it is pulling it right off. So nothing's really supporting this deck right here at this point. Nothing. It's not even tied into the house. It's actually pulled it out right from here above the light right to the end. So think about this for a sec. How long has this been like this? We see indications of the paint that's been painted across here. So at one time, the parge has come off, they painted it. Further parge, and now recent times, has continued to fall off. But look at the retaining wall here. This is all new, right? Mm -hmm. And I can tell it's new because they actually contoured cut yeah. that retaining wall to match the lean of the cinder block retaining wall. So this is a big issue. Yes, it's a retaining wall. It's not part of structure of the house. It's part of the retaining wall that holds the earth underneath the deck. And more than likely, the problem there is that we don't have proper water drainage. It's building up in the winter. It freezes. It's pushing that wall. So the, here's the issue. It's going to continue to push it until the point it pushes, pulls this deck off the house. Oh my gosh. And it will collapse. It will come down. I'm going to have a world of uh, recommendations for you the next time I, I meet you here. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what I think, what we should do, what we have to do, and we'll take it from there. OK. Best friend of the world right here is the camera for an inspector. Take pictures, document the report. It is a foolproof way of showing the homeowners what's going on. You know, like. They only come in here, and I'm hoping they come in with the inspector to take a look at everything. And you got to try and remember everything. So why not have pictures? You know, whether you carry a camera, the inspector should. But why not have pictures so you can go back and say, that crack here was at the edge. And there was an area here that was repaired. So this corner has been a problem zone. And what have they done about it? You know, that's one of the minor issues compared to this being a garage, which is part of the house. Like, I don't know how they got away with this 40 years ago. Just picture this. The car's running in the garage, and all the gases that come from that muffler can just travel right through the house, through the ductwork, right inside. This is a recipe for disaster. It's a good thing that somebody told them, do not use this as a garage. Please do not tell me you're parking a car in here. That was the mold guy, by the way, not the home inspector. You know, it's not too often I see the generator system, which is your secondary stage from the electrical panel to have the generator panel here and have it turn on, which is your hook up here, have it turn on when uh, the power goes out or even having to have the ability to turn it on and then giving the power in here again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 aluminum wires running into the panel. These guys here is Romex, this is copper. One, two, three. For, oh, look at the aluminum we have tied in here. This is not allowed. We have two, four, six, eight lines running in that box. Frank's not going to like that. Well, there's definitely water coming in here, probably from the bottom of the window or the roof out front. You know, it's funny. In the report, 
the inspector gave a recommendation to Javex this window sills, right, because it's all the black marks and they're afraid of mold. Bleach is way worse for you than mold is. Do not use bleach to clean mold. Soap and water, gloves and a mask will do just fine. That's at proper height. It's at 32 inches. Just looks low. 32 inches is OK for a railing, but this should be a guard. And we want to see it taller than that, just for safety issues. Even my body, look how easily I can go over that, right? Just imagine someone playing up here, and you just nudge them. Over they go. Oh, we know the height's no good, and I just don't like that ceiling fan there at all. That fan turning around here just clip anybody in the head, and that's not the way we do things. Look at this. I've, I've got the kid in me, you know. I'm, I'm the. I can still be a young boy, and for me, what a room to have this as my room. You know, I probably have my you know play area down there, and my bedroom up here, and the closet here. And the cool thing about going through this closet is you can actually go underneath the stairs and into the attic space here. That is just too cool. I just love this. Look, this miniature library. You know, even though these are like an attic set of stairs, yeah, they're still a set of stairs and minimum code. There's all kinds of issues in this house. It's 36 inches for a set of stairs. That's 28. Got away with it. No handrail. Got away with it. Not even a handrail on the wall side, but it being 28 inches, imagine a rail that sort of pushes you this way anyways, but you want it here to stop anyone from falling. We'll definitely fix that. Mr. Bennett. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Oh, it's been a long day, but it's, uh, uh, I'm doing pretty good. It looks like you've been here all day. This is a big house. It is, it is. A lot of minor and a few major, major right here. So we have an issue right here with the uh, foundation wall. What's going on there? This is a retaining wall. Yeah. This is the foundation. The retaining wall, you can tell it's now. Shifted. Yeah, because what's happened is water's gotten behind it. It's I frozen, it's pushed this wall out. Yeah. And you can see that not too many years ago, somebody put in a new retaining wall, stairs, and they actually contour cut this retaining wall to that heave. <laughs> Let's continue. Nope. This is a garage. Yep. OK, we see the big garage door. What do we see? I see an opening with no door. I see a set of stairs that look like it's going up into the house. Yeah, so it's a garage that's open to the house. Yeah. Do you believe the home inspector missed this? He missed this? He missed the retaining wall. He caught the cracks. <laughs> he missed the retaining wall. Yeah. He missed the garage being attached that's to the house. That's unbelievable. Now, we have so much ductwork, not just here, but in the back. So yep. I, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. All right, panel, all green is aluminum. Okay, okay. it's marked right on the wire, it says aluminum. Yep. So look at how many green we have. Look at how many Romex we have. Right. Oh, uh, what do you think? It's just like a can of worms. It's just a lot of different uh, electrical here, so it looks suspect. You want to check it out. Oh, yeah. OK, we see the one, two, three, four yeah. bays. We see our outside structure. The inside wall structure now steps in from the lower wall. Right. OK, so now they have about a 212 pitch shingled roof mm -hmm. incorrect. Basically, it's leaking from every point in the front of the house. The windows, the flashing, the 40-year-old cedar shake. It's, it's coming right through into the inside of the home. Let's bring in the graves. Let's inspect the roof. Yeah. If I have my wish, that all gets turned to a metal roof. OK? I want to know the damage up there. We know it's the siding. We know it's the flashing. We know it's the windows. You know what I'm thinking? It's the whole front face of this wall we got to change. Windows and siding. Yeah. Let's look at the uh, foundation wall. I want the drain scoped on the outside to find out our options of water flow from mm -hmm. the retaining wall to the front driveway of my options and what I'm going to do with the garage. Now, beautiful house on the outside, isn't it? Well, it's even neater on the inside. You're going to really get to like this house once you start looking around. But we have a lot of exposure on the front face. This face goes all the way up. It's all open. There's no overhanging gable. There's nothing protecting the front face of this house. And it's all wood. So heavy maintenance on it. I don't think it's ever been done. We're getting some leakage on the inside. And you can actually see it where the structure beam actually ties in. 
Okay, so you can actually see all the moisture actually coming down the front face of this wall. And that's why I want to open it right there. Okay, let's go see what we can find up there. All right. Oh, yeah. Now, this is more than just a seam leak. There's a lot of water coming in right at this beam connection, and you can actually see it right there. Oh, yeah. The amount of insects alone in this, just one bout of insulation, the amount of dirt, you can just see that something is running from the inside of those walls straight in. And actually, you can see water stains on the underneath of the sheeting here. We're looking at the same thing there? Yeah. Damon? Hey, Steve, good timing, man. How you doing? Good, how are you? Well, I don't know yet. I see a lot of moisture on the bottom of this roof, I'll tell you that much, and I can see it actually running down the rafters, Steve, right to the edge of the plate. I can't see past there, but there's a good breeze coming in there and a lot of moisture, and everything is just starting to rot. These windows are an absolute mess. Hey, somebody has cocked the crap out of this. The caulking's not very old at all. And the flash in here, look at that. Like, I mean, you even have the nail holes exposed. Like, just so much. So many leak spots on this roof right off the bat. Yeah, with your driving rains, you know, the cedar becomes a bit of an issue. Well, especially you know. if no one's maintaining it. I mean, this looks like it hasn't been stained in a while either. It's all peeling off. It's rotting at the bottom here. Take a look at this, Steve. I didn't even bend this flashing. Think of the rain that's getting in there and driving right into that window. Oh, that's not a leak. Where'd my finger go? You can stick your <laughs> finger in there. Okay, so we know it's the siding. We know it's the flashing. We know it's the windows. You know what I'm thinking? It's the whole front face of this wall we got to change. Windows and siding. Yeah. You okay? Uh, yeah, it's good enough to be good. Okay. After you guys get this supported, this is actually going to help it from caving in once we take down this one wall, right? This block wall is going to have to come down. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to move every piece of stone out of the way. Dom, there's one reason I brought you here. It's a little daunting at just looking at the front face of this house, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, that front face is cedar shake. It's been leaking, the windows are leaking, the flashing has been done improperly, the caulking is horrible, and the windows are failing at this point. I um, say we do them all, Damon. Number one, just to give the same exposure from the outside. Yeah. Number two, they're all gonna fail, if not now, very soon. They're rotted. I mean, I can tell from this distance here, they're very rotted. Up close, you'll see, the, you'll see it. And if we're doing it, might you might as well do it properly. One thing Mike always recommends is that we have Martin come in and scope all the drains. All right, man, what did you find in this one? Well, it leads pretty much to this point. And then what I'm looking at is uh, almost like a catch basin or a little tiny manhole. Uh, what, what, what do you mean, there's a manhole? So what's, under, what's below it? Well, what are you seeing? If, if we would remove the asphalt, I'm pretty sure there would be some sort of an access cover. Yeah. Uh, and then what I'm looking at right now is, uh, is, a, is a cavity. It's, it's a large opening. Um, of what, concrete? It looks like a concrete, yeah, formation. And, uh, and there's also one drain that either comes in or, or goes out. Where does this feed off to? I don't know. You don't... At, at this stage, I don't know. I need to get access here. You coming 
up for the big unveiling. Martin. Oh. Yeah, nice try when I'm already done, right? I wouldn't be surprised if this was a, a catch basin to grab the, you know, rainwater, the rainwater, the snow. We'll never be able to lift that off, but Sorry? You think we'll be able to get that off? Scoping with the camera, find out where we go from here. Yeah. I think you're right, it's probably just a catch basin. You figured it out? <laughs> is, is he's panting and sweaty? Oh, pretty much. What have you found down that drain? Okay, I've got uh, I got one, two, three, four inlets. Uh, lines that are draining the storm water, groundwater into this uh, into this whatever this cavity, well. whatever you want to call yeah. it, yeah. And then I have this uh, a six inch uh, clay pipe, which seems like a discharge. Now I pushed the camera about ninety feet from this point out, uh, yeah. and I'm heading towards the road. If we can actually use that pipe and discharge the water out of here using this, yeah. That would be ideal. I mean, we have really nowhere else to discharge it right now. We're in a bowl. We're yeah. in the bottom of a bowl right now. So we're really digging this out, bringing it somewhere else is yeah. really gonna be tough, especially with the amount of trees and roots we'd be dealing with. Of course, of course. This would be a great option. Any water that accumulates by the house can actually be directed into the catch basin and out to the road. It's not a garage. We're gonna turn it back into a basement, okay? I wanna make sure you don't park your vehicle in there. I'm sorry. That just shows that it's not just one thing. There's a lot of things happening here. This siding is definitely leaking, and so are these windows. Replacing the siding? Replacing the windows. More than likely, both. This is one of our biggest days. We actually have Colin starting on the wall here. What I want him to do is actually tie a new block wall in to fill this in. We're gonna leave a double door here so they can swing out and actually get stuff in and out of here. So core, we got a 12 inch course here. When you tie in your new block wall here, are you gonna come into the half bricks and the existing wall? Are you gonna take those out, tie back in? How do you wanna do this? No, I'm just gonna use brick ties and go up. So you just wrap them up onto that wall? Yeah, yeah. Sufficient down here, you're gonna chip off some of the top concrete, I'm assuming? Yeah, we'll remove this lip. You can yeah. see it's already separating itself. Yeah, because when the they poured this, that. they probably just poured right over the footing part too, right? Yeah, it's already separating itself, so we'll, we'll peel off this top layer and then our block will just go right up continuous from the four feet below all, all right. the way up. So this is like at least a two day project. Yep. Okay, so what I'm gonna do for these people is I, I'm gonna build an enclosure here while you guys are working. I'm gonna insulate it because you know, they got two kids and this is, the whole story here is this is all exposed to the upstairs. They can't, we can't make this into a garage. Mm -hmm. I gotta close this in, that's why you're here. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Bennett. How you doing, pal? I'm pretty good, end of a long day, but this doesn't look much different, does it? Well, the rain is not working out for us. I can see you're trying to take the... Uh, Siding off the front of the house. Well, the shingles. The cedar shingles. Yeah. Cedar shake. Cedar shake shingles, whatever you want to call Reinforced them. Reinforced the rafters. Good, I like that. Yeah, they were a little under beef, so we just structured them up a little more. Uh, we'll fix up the two end ones. Started the cinder block wall. Yes, the Colin. The temporary insulating wall. Very That's good. right, yeah, because we got to keep warm. And we got to come up with an idea for the front rail to uh, secure it. I was going to ask you about that. Do you, you want to actually just get a, a proper railing system up there? Yeah. The two kids, it'd be nice to, for them to be able to use that deck, right? Yeah, well, the homeowners are, well, actually, they're here. Damn. Good to see you. Just Good. in time. Good to see you. Nice to see you, man. Look like you've been working out. <laughs> Good to see you again. Good to see you. Well, come on, take a look at the mess. And sorry about the mess. <laughs> all the vehicles and everything else that happens. Come on in. Oh my goodness. I'll well, tell still you all living, about it. So. Okay, you can see the front. We'll just stop for a second and talk yeah. about the front. These are what we call scissor joists, okay? And they go right up inside the roof line. They go actually through the floor on the third floor, structured to the rafters down in the back, and it's a really custom design. So they were a little rotted, they were a little worn, but we beefed them up. So I'm very happy with uh, how know. they've done it. We are gonna close this wall up because it is not a garage. And right in the listing we checked, right in the listing of when you yeah. bought the house from the real estate company, what did it say? 
double car garage. Yeah. It's not a garage. We're going to turn it back into a basement, okay? I want to make sure you don't park your vehicle in there. I'm sorry. It really was something we were counting on having, is having the two car garage with access into the house. Because when, I mean, when you've got babies and groceries and all the things you're bringing in and out, it's challenging. But I think far more important is that we are all safe. We brought in Martin. He ran his camera scope in the drain, and he said there is a pit here. So we've cut the ground, we've opened up the pit, and here's what we found. One, it was filled with earth, okay? So all the water has been backwashing earth back in here, which has clogged it. So much to the point, this main line right here runs right to the ditch on the outside of your property. We dug it up on the front, and we're gonna <laughs> dig deeper, and let me tell you. <laughs> There was all kinds of blockages in that pipe, so now we have to dig down. We're going to recircuit everything. We're going to get a, tr a trough drain in the front here to pick up any water that comes down. It's oh, going to go back nice. down into here with snow nets in there. A proper cistern is what we're going to call it. So you had a real huge issue with water flow here. Oh, my. This wall over here has been removed. And what we're going to do is we're going to put up a retainer wall with stone. This is, seems to be the smartest thing. So we're going to allow the water to leach through that wall. We're going to pick it up with a drain, run it through underneath, and run it into the trough, which runs it in here, which runs it up to the front. As for the inside, you know, we're going to be working on the rails. You know, we're going to be doing a little bit of damage and a lot of uh, dust, and we're going to try and work around it so we don't have too much dust for the kids. We'll contain oh, it as, as so best much. we can yeah. with zip walls and the whole bit. Absolutely. I I'm just overwhelmed. Like the, the extent of the things that need to be done, I just think, what would we do if we didn't have Mike and his team? Like, what would we do? Not only are we tearing this out for spray foam, but we have new windows coming in today. Trimbo is here getting ready, so we want the windows in before we spray foam so we can get full spray foam right to the window. Well, we got a four section vinyl window with two casements on each end, two center fixed, with thick extrusions, so we have some structure here, a lot of wind blows, so you know, we want to maintain the strength on the glass. It's custom fit to fit this opening right now. We made it exactly fit with a foam insulation, nice and tight. We left the glass out because such a heavy window. Once the window's installed, we're going to put the glass in because we manufacture the product ourselves, so we can do that and no problems. Okay, so we just basically finished doing our test and troubleshoot. Um, main issue that we have in this home, two of them basically, one is that we have one line coming out of this panel, coming into this junction box right here, which is way overloaded. We have 35 items on it. 12 is max that we have to put on here. Did some investigating, and uh, we found uh, this right here. Yeah, I'm actually gonna pull that off. That's a moret that's basically melted. The cause of this, this home was done with aluminum wiring. Wires were short, I guess when they replaced the panel, so they extended the wires, or well, they used copper to extend the wires. Okay, so basically, when you're gonna put copper and aluminum together, there's a few things you need to worry about. First, when you put your wires together, you gotta put the Norlux on it to stop the ox um, from oxidizing. Secondly, you need to make sure you have the proper moret. This moret here, clear as day is not the proper moret. What ends up happening is the aluminum, the aluminum will heat up more than the copper. So, and it, it will expand and contract. These morets are not made for that. This can only withstand so much heat. If you look up here closely, you can actually see a hole in here. This one was starting to burn as well. Look at the sheeting on the wire. That's actually burnt. Before I leave here, I need to make this safe. Have pesticides. We could have uh, E. coli if you have animals around right. the property and stuff like that. So interesting, and all that is being fed back into the house, and they are drinking and cooking with this stuff. That is correct. Yeah. We're pulling the whole front off the off the off your house on the upper side. Okay, so we're going to take it all off. We're going to make sure it's watertight. Everything on the west side of this house. Every day here is a huge day. I've got 30 people here again today. We're power flushing the line that comes from the cistern in the front of the house 
right out to the culvert. They uh, push water into it and then basically pull it all back out. It pulls all the dirt out. It's fantastic we can use that line. It saves me a lot of trouble. My guys are in for it today. They're digging the whole day today. That's the whole crew. They have to dig in for the gabion basket that we're going to put in. It's basically a retaining wall that's caged in. So we get a cage, we fill it with rock, it allows water to seep through. We bring it towards the drain in front of the garage, and that's why we're power flushing that line to bring all that water back out to the culvert where it should be. We have the Bowens here today. They're finishing off their block course. We're going to get them to parge the outside front uh, just to give it a proper finish. We have to tie that wall in to make it look like it was always there. We have Steve Graves here today. We're going to start ripping off the whole front face of that wall today, get all the siding off of it, prepare for the windows. We have Trimble here today, ready to install those windows as soon as Steve's done. It's a long conveyor belt of guys ready to work today, and most of them are up on that roof. This door measured out at 40 inches. You can, we can make a 40 inch door. We don't like to, it's oversized. Over time, it taxes the door, it'll wear it out. Uh, I think you're much better to go with the double door, it's stronger. Removing a railing that is below code and replacing it with a railing that is at code. This is way low, I don't know how they got away with this. This is beyond old school. You know what I mean? I've never seen them this low before. This wood was actually milled by tail. It's ash, it's true two by four. We're trying to match the, it's, it's kind of the bulkier wood of the original house, which is the three, four by six here. You know, just give it some beef, make it look nice, make it look like it's supposed to be here once it's stained. So Hugh, I heard you found some problems with the well here. Yes, we did. Um, couple of issues here. Uh, number one, this well is actually in a pit. Uh, it is a drilled well. We do not know yet exactly how deep it actually is. Okay, well, what are some of the issues caused by having a well like that? The main issue is a surface influence, so basically lay of the land, uh, the well pit itself physically filling up, and if the, there's not a proper well seal on that, um, basically we're getting water in from the top of the well. And then it affects your water, that obviously, because yeah. you're getting earth, you're getting bugs, you're getting debris in your water. You, we could have pesticides, we could have uh, E. coli if you have animals around right. the property and stuff like that. We're going to raise this case up above grade so there's no potential of surface influence into this actual well. So we're going to have a pump here. It's going to pump it back into the house. Now, where yeah. in the house? Uh, it's going to be over in the far corner of the house. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a pressure tank there. Uh, from there, we're going to send it through some treatment equipment. Uh, Filters. So, fil filter Filtration. So we're going to basically get rid of the sm There's a uh, ranted smell in the water here. Yes, there is. We do have some iron here. Yeah. Uh, we do also have some hardness issues. So we're going to deal with tho those issues. And also, we're going to deal with bacteriological, uh, which is E. coli, coliform, any Which could actually make you very, very sick. That is correct. Once it's left our, our treatment equipment, yeah. it will be safe and probably drink. So you mean they could actually lose the bottled water and maybe drink their own water for that a change? Is, that is correct. The other thing which we're actually also going to be doing is we're putting the reverse osmosis system so they can virtually lose all their bottles. There's no more lugging bottles. They'll be very happy. Yeah. I can guarantee they'll be very happy. So this is the filtration system. You want to explain it a little bit for me? We're going to start old and fresh here. Right. Um, we're going to put a precipitator tank right here. Precipitation okay. tank? Yes. Is that what it's called? And what yeah. does that do? That will oxidize the iron. Um, there's a bit of iron in the water, so you have to put uh, you have to put air into the system right. to oxidize the iron. That's the only way that this system will be able to filter it. So once it gets the iron gets filtered out of it, yeah. it will flow through here. It'll come in. It'll go through a pre-filter. From the pre-filter, it'll go into the softener tank. 
takes all your hardness and calcium and all that out of the water. So it's going through almost three filtration systems. Basically, yeah. Your iron, then like a sediment filter. Yeah. And then it goes through your softening filter. Wow. So by the time it gets into the house, this water is so clean. It's in there hundred percent. Now after after it goes through the softener, yeah. um, I haven't installed it yet, but there will be a UV, an ultraviolet light system. Yeah. And that will take care of everything. It's amazing because I never thought of water that way. I take city water for granted, right? A lot of people. I haven't lived rural in a long time. So I never even, even when I lived in the country, I never thought of well water being no. contaminated. No. You're thinking well water is coming from way down below. That's it's good. not contaminated. That's right. Yeah. You're getting it fed, spring fed, fed. It's the cleanest right. water you can almost drink, right? Almost, but not quite. Very interesting. Once we're completed here, basically what you're gonna see is the hole itself will be all, all be filled in. The only thing that you're gonna see left is basically this steel casing here with a with a vermin proof cap. And that's the finished product. Crazy day today, but it's good. We're getting to the end. Everyone's actually doing their final connections. I have Craig Lowe here today. It's fantastic. He's actually painting my wall for me as we speak. That always means the end to me. We have electricians doing their final today. They're putting in their lights, putting on their switch plates, their covers. That's a good sign for me. The inside is actually being completed. We still have Martin here today hooking up the drains, getting the water out of here, which is fantastic. We also have Teo here today. He's doing the landscaping down there. I mean, we've all got to be on top of each other as usual to finish this, get these people back home. We've been here way too long. The job got out of hand. It exploded on us like they do sometimes. We had to stay and finish it. We're getting near the end. So we've applied two coats of base coat. Uh, we've primed the walls. Now we're ready for finish coat. We're applying the finish coat. Uh, the owner's chosen a, a Venetian finish, which has swirls inside of it. So uh, this is the last step and uh, we're done very shortly. We're installing our metal roof. It's a steel, pre-painted steel system. The fasteners are actually hidden, much like siding. So the panels actually overlap and lock in. Most of the fasteners are, are hidden from any you know, weather which would corrode them. Typically that's uh, where these types of roofs fail first. Ideally, we don't want the, the, the snow or ice to build up and cause problems. So uh, one, the, the type of roofing itself is, is basically ice dam proof. At the same time, we don't want all that snow and ice sliding off and potentially causing body harm. So uh, uh, what the snow guards do is they just retain the snow to the point where it, it doesn't, it just sort of prevents huge amounts sliding off at once. One of the issues we had was with the, the driveway coming in, we wanted to stop car traffic from coming any closer to the house. To do that, we had to create a break in here. Then we have the top of the cistern that was buried in the driveway. To make a break in that so that we can access it or someone can access it later if there is ever any issue is I changed the stone. I went to a different stone to a different pattern. If there is an issue, all they have to do is pull that one square, dig down, pull the cover again, fix whatever's wrong, fill it back in, put the pattern back in. It'll all work together, and that way they're not hunting in the dark to try and find where that is. I bet you like this, your own little I workshop. I love it. Your <laughs> man cave. Like, see the man cave. I like you should see my man cave. Uh. <laughs> it says on the front door, Mike's cave, do not enter. <laughs> it doesn't yet, but it's going to. It's good. <laughs> That looks really good. Look at the front of that. I love the windows. I love the rails. Isn't that nice? Yeah, that is really good. You can really see the difference. And look at that. You can't even right? tell there was a garage door there I know. before. That it just is blends awesome. Right in. Good job. Let's go inside. Thank you, buddy. All right. It's a little cooler today. <laughs> Just a little chilly. At least one of you is wearing a coat. Kim, nice to see you again. Hi, Kim. Sir Jay, nice to see you, man. You guys are looking great. Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you like this? It's amazing. 
Yeah. I'm excited. I, I'm speechless. I, uh, I can't believe this is our house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is so exciting. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's inside. I love the siding, the oh windows, oh, the doors. Windows. You know, the graves go into the extreme work of the metal roof and the little skid plates on top that stop the snow. So we don't want anything coming down, sliding down and hitting anyone down here. I love the rails. I, I'm stunned. Tail, wow. having the sawmill at home and milling it up and, you know, the guys putting in the pickets. Oh, Here's what I like. There's no longer is, a wow. hole in the wall that used to have a garage door. And what do we have now? A nice double door and lights and the electricians that we brought in. Everyone that came in on this tail doing all this. But first, what did we have to open up? Oh, well, look it. We take a cut in the driveway and what do we find? Another issue. <laughs> How are we going to solve the wall, the water, and everything just working together that we cleaned it out, set this in motion, and now you can actually, this is the marking for that hole, right? But with all this, Beautiful. making sure that this area now and all the stone wall and everything was done and drains underneath that and it comes into the trough. Everything done, restructured. He's even, look at this here, he's even cut this plank, this two by 12 plank to actually support all the deck and then put in all the hangers that were put in place, resecure this whole area. Well, and I just imagine you know, the day really, that really somebody have. came walking across there and that deck decided to give way. That wouldn't, have been away. that wouldn't have been Hence the good. joist hangers as well, right? We put joist hangers back on just for double protection all the way down. Let's go inside. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. You got it. Oh, my God. Look at this. New generator panel. <laughs> oh, you know thank what? You. It's there. So now all you need to do is get a generator. Oh, if you're on gas, so get a backup, a 12K, put it outside, boom, boom, switches right over, clicks it to the panel, and you'll be the only one in the neighborhood. Everyone's coming over to your house. Oh, exactly. Wow. I know we winter's so coming. So many power yeah. outs here. Mm -hmm. So you made sure kids. you added that, and I like that, oh, as, well, as well as a you. full house surge protector, which I think is very important. So that means if anything happens, lightning hits, anything happens for any reason, boom, it takes that out first. <laughs> Stops everything else from being damaged because I've witnessed this before. Now I love this because to me this is wow. the best of the best. You're talking a UV system now that is so top of the line. You have the salt system, you have the UV, you have state of the art, the reverse osmosis, pumps, everything you have is the best of the best. Thank and you. honestly, now you have clean water, you have filtered water on top of the UV wall, uh, water, so the, everything here. <laughs> I'm a happy guy. It's like Christmas. Now, Thank you so I much. I didn't get all this in my house. I can tell you that much. Well, we know somebody. <laughs> I know a guy. He's good at what he does. You remember the stairs? That I call them really the stairs of death that were over here. To me, they were not so good. But you know what? By putting up rails, it makes it nice and safe for the kids. That's so huge. I'm happy with this. That is yes. huge. Thank you. For me, this is the look, you know, you come up here, it was the whole thing about being downstairs and then coming up here was having this open concept. We took down all that barn board that was there, right? Yeah. By taking that wood off and solving all the water issues which we found everywhere and, and insulating it with the wall tight and bringing in those guys to do it and putting up the drywall, doesn't that kind of brighten the area? I, I don't even know how, well, how to describe it. It looks like a completely different house. If you notice, we don't have a ceiling fan here. Not only is a blade not gonna knock you and the kids out, but the rails are proper height and nice and strong. I am completely blown away by, by what was found and what was fixed and the extent to which things were done, the professionalism. I, I don't know how we ever, ever would have been able to afford to do this because we, we sunk our life savings into this house. Thank you. Thank right. you so very much. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Damon. No good worries. Thank you. Dude, you're a good guy. Too much. Yeah. You. We, we you. don't even. I don't yeah, know. I want to shake you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to We're, we're going to adopt Damon. Damon. <laughs> we're having a third child. He's Damon. <laughs> Something for you. Do not enter. Oh, I love it. That's great. Come on, that's great.